Okay, you want to see a well-preserved barn find? I mean, they don't all have to be all cluttered up and look like junk and be rusty. Of course, the barn wasn't really a barn. It was more of a storage unit. Um, but it's elevated off the ground. We think that that helped air to flow underneath the structure and maybe carry away moisture from the car and help preserve it. Um, here we see... Steve O'Neill taking off the sheets that covered the car for so many years. Um, he's the new owner, just bought it. He got it and the sign up above there and all the parts. Uh, <clears throat> we're just uh, happy he let us come along and take a look at the car. I mean, the Honduras maroon paint is original, and that's the big deal about this car, uh, or one of the big deals. Uh, you know, yeah, the paint has some imperfections, but that's just part of it. Collectors love this. Um, this car will not be repainted. It would be a big mistake to repaint it, and people that do um, just don't realize maybe that they're actually devaluing the car. Steve checked the body. It's a no-hit car. Uh, the bonding strip, like he's looking at here, is, is in great shape. Um, look at this molding on the fender. No scratches. Most people lean over the car and scratch them up, but this owner was real special. He put side pipes underneath the rocker panels. That's what an enthusiast would do back in the day, but they can just be pulled off. No big deal. Um, Steve's going to lift off this hood and show us the engine bay. Uh, yeah, the engine did, in, the engine and the transmission, which the four speed, did get pulled, but that was no big deal because if you look under here you see he didn't alter anything he kept it all all the clips and bolts and all the hardware's under there and just ready to drop the engine back in this was a two top car he stored this hard top uh, above the car apparently as long as the car was here we believe about 75 the car was put in this barn and you notice the dust accumulation looks like 45 years Steve had aired the tires a couple weeks before we came out to take these pictures. And even though they're old bias ply rubber, and hey, look at that fuel injection. This is a fuely car. We'll get to that in a minute. But those tires held air. And those are great tires. I mean, they're period correct. Uh, Firestone 500s. Okay, looking inside the car, we get the fawn interior. Very popular with the Honduras Maroon. Uh, the interior is in good shape. Uh, it's original. And that's what collectors like. Steve will not restore the interior. All it needs is cleaned up, same as the rest of the body. The four hubcaps were in the car, stock. The, there you see the, the tack, and then behind it, the speedometer goes to 160, and the mileage. Look at that. All nines. 99,999. And that was the owner's cue to go ahead and pull the engine and rebuild it. And that's what he did. Uh, you can see the oil change sticker it goes to 92. That shows the mileage was up there pretty high, even though the car doesn't look it. I mean, look at those seats. They're pretty sharp. Same with the door panels. And look, electric windows, a nice option. The console with the AM radio and the clock. And I took this picture after we got everything kind of cleaned up. Steve's here looking at the engine bay, really excited. There's T3 headlight bulbs. Uh, showing there, probably put in a long time ago. Uh, we found some uh, original bi supply tires in the shop that goes with the car, so they'll go on the car for, for showing. In the cellar, here's the original 327. Those valve covers aren't stock, but uh, when the engine did get rebuilt uh, before the owner died, he knew he was sick and he went ahead and rebuilt the engine and he didn't have quite time to get it in the car, sadly. But that is the 327. Steve got the fuel injection, and uh, he, he, put, he put it on the engine just to show it what it looks like uh, when he gets completed. And here it is coming out of the cellar. We want to show you about matching numbers because I took this picture of the VIN on the steering column of the car. You can see the last six digits are 101792. Those are the key numbers. 
Now we go to the engine block stamping and you'll see the 101792 stamp there. That shows a match. And here's the four-speed transmission. And guess what? We look on the case, and it's a little hard to see through these uh, rods, but you'll see the same six digits, 101792, uh, verifying the uh, transmission with matching numbers. Okay, so that's the car. Uh, I don't know about you. It's always fun for me to see people get cars out of barns. How do you do it? You know, this car, they jack the front end up, put wheel dollies under each front tire. Now you got a couple of friends helping you here and you start rolling it, uh, trying to maneuver around things. Uh, there was a cabinet in the way and they're trying to get around that. Of course, you don't want to damage the car. It's important to get it out. Uh, without causing any, without, you would sure wouldn't want to hit it and damage the body. Um, that's me. I got the camera and I moved that little floor jack out of the way. Um, so we're pulling the car towards the edge of the barn. Then we have to go in the back and jack up the rear end. We're going to pull the rear end around so that we can line the car up to go straight out of the barn. Ready? So, here's Steve jacking up the rear end of the car. You see it's still on dollies at the front. And then, uh, his friend Gary there in the left. If you came in at an angle a little bit with the trailer, pull it even. And then we'll go around to the front here, and there, there's the car just about in position uh, to go out of the barn. Uh, Steve backed up his, his trailer and then jacked it up, and about even with the level of the barn, and, and then you see he's uh, winching it out onto the trailer for the ride home. And this is great time for Steve finally got got the car and then of course we he tied it down and I did a walk around here just to show the body you can see it much better in the, in the daylight 